Greetings. Thank you for visiting the GC Archive Statistics and Research virtual booth and watching this presentation about the new Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventist Online, shortly known as ESDA. In this presentation, we will talk about what has been accomplished to date, what is still needed, and how to use the ESDA website. In the following video, you will learn about the development of the Encyclopedia project, why the Church needs an online encyclopedia, who the editors and other contributors are, the main ESDA goals, and finally, the encyclopedia's potential for the Adventist mission. Who are the Seventh-day Adventists? Who took the Adventist message to India? Or who took it to other countries? What is the history of Adventist universities, hospitals, and other institutions around the world? My great-grandparents were missionaries to Lake Titicaca. Where can I find information about them? What if we could have reliable answers to these and other questions at our fingertips? This is now possible using the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists online. The Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists, or the ESTA online, is a global church project that includes an estimated 8,500 entries accompanied by photographs, media, and original documents in an online portal accessible to anyone. The ESTA online is a great tool for those seeking to do research and learn more about the Seventh-day Adventist church around the world, and also for those looking to witness to others. The ESTA online is the Adventist church's first online reference work available to the public since June 2020. This free website will be periodically updated and expanded. Some people may ask, why a new encyclopedia? Why not just update the current encyclopedia? Well, almost 25 years after the second revised edition of the Seventh-day Adventist Encyclopedia, and more than half a century after publication of the first edition, the Seventh-day Adventist Church needs a new reference work, one that embodies the diverse Adventist Church of the 21st century, that reflects the tremendous growth in the Church in the last 50 years and the shifts in global membership, and that incorporates the latest Adventist historical scholarship. But it also needs an online encyclopedia that includes all the possibilities of the digital age and enables interactive engagement by readers. During its spring meeting at the Adventist Church headquarters in April 2015, the General Conference Executive Committee approved a budget for the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists, the ESDA. The ESDA is a brand new reference work. It includes historical data from world regions that previously were left out of the encyclopedia. Also, even though the authors of the earlier editions really did try to present an international, worldwide perspective, there are some that feel that it was written mostly from a North American perspective. The ESTA draws on the expertise of hundreds of scholars, teachers, and authors worldwide, about 30 assistant editors and research assistants, and 25 consultant editors from all 13 divisions, the Middle East and North Africa field, and the General Conference work on the encyclopedia. The advantage of worldwide involvement is that the editors and authors can collect materials from their local churches, such as letters and diaries that members keep and never think of sharing unless asked. They can also collect information based on old tradition by conducting interviews with surviving relatives or people who know about specific historical events. Sadly, such information can vanish if not put in writing. One of the main goals of this encyclopedia is to be a missional tool to reach the world with the Adventist message and highlight the missional challenges still remaining in order to reach the world. Other goals are to supply reliable information on Adventist history, crucial events and themes, organizations, entities, institutions, and people, strengthen Adventist identity in a fast-growing worldwide movement, heightening awareness of distinctive doctrinal and prophetic beliefs, and provide a reference work for those new to the Adventist faith, mature in the faith, and not of the Adventist faith, to learn about all aspects of Adventism. All ESTA articles are signed and include notes and sources. The goal of each ESTA article is to be primary source-based, honest, 
open, comprehensive, and rigorous, representative of the diversity and richness of Adventism, and fully understandable to both church members and the public. Thousands of articles are completed and in writing, but many topics still need authors. We welcome members from all walks of life with expertise on a given subject, not only scholars specializing in history or theology, to contribute articles to the encyclopedia or to suggest a new topic. Browse the article list on the ESDA website and consider. What are some other topics that merit inclusion in the encyclopedia? It may be a forgotten person that you think people should know about. It may be the Adventist work in the country or city in which you were born. You may want to suggest an article on a school or ministry, or write about Adventist engagement with an issue such as social activism, religious freedom, or the environment. If you want to suggest a new topic or contribute an article, please check the Get Involved page for the author guidelines and write to encyclopedia at gc.adventist.org or leave a message to the ESDA website. We have nothing to fear for the future, except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and His teaching in our past history. It's a familiar statement by Ellen G. White, one of the Adventist Church pioneers and co-founders, but with lasting significance. And for us to know God's teachings and leadings, we need to know the facts of our history. Help us fulfill that inspired admonition to remember, record, and rehearse the history of God's church so that together we may go forward fearlessly into the future. I'm excited about the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists online. It will make research about the Adventist Church so much easier and more engaging. I will use it and share it with my friends and other people who want to learn more about my faith and my church. Encyclopedia.adventist.org, representing the diversity and richness of Adventist heritage. ESDA was released last year on July 1 with 2,000 articles and 4,000 photographs on Adventist history from around the world. Since the launch, nearly 1,000 new articles, 2,000 photographs and a growing collection of videos have been added to the website. The ESDA editorial team plans to publish over 4,000 articles by June of next year. Now, let's have a look at the Encyclopedia's website. Again, you can access the Encyclopedia online at encyclopedia.adventist.org. The following short video demonstrates the Encyclopedia's various contents and shows how to easily navigate through the website. Let's take a brief tour of the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists website. Of course, the first thing we'll need to do is get to the website, and that can happen one of two ways. You can simply enter encyclopedia.adventist.org directly into your browser's address bar, or you can, from your favorite search engine, type in Adventist Encyclopedia. It helps if you spell it correctly. And you'll see it pops up as the first entry. Both, of course, take you to the website's home page, and we've designed the site to be uncluttered and simple and easy to get through. And we've done that by limiting the home page to a series of featured articles, which you'll see as you reload the home page or visit the home page. Each time you'll get a fresh set of five recommended articles. And we've got a prominent search field and a very simple one-level navigation system. So, how do you get to content within the site? Well, the first and simplest method would be simply to go to your search bar. And let's say, for instance, we wanted to see articles on medical missionaries. And you can see that takes us to our search result page, and you'll see that the search field stays present on every page in the site. Well, we've got 378 results. That's obviously quite a few. You may not want to browse through all of those, so we can limit that by putting quotes in. And what that does is limit the search results to articles that contain the specific phrase, medical missionary. You'll see that's limited us to 151 options. Now, that's still quite a few, so how could we limit that a little bit further? Well, we could enter more search terms within the search field, or we could use our advanced options and do medical missionary. And then we could limit that result to, for instance, only articles from the North American Division and only biographies. 
And when I click search here, you see that's limited it only to 29 articles, which is a lot easier number to get through. So that's one way to get to our content via the search field. But another way is via the Browse Articles page. Now the Browse Articles page presents all of the articles that are currently in our database in a filterable form. And what filtering means is if you click on the Show Advanced Options tab or link, you'll see we've got a number of settings here we can change that will filter the results to a more limited set. And here at the top we've got the option to select the number of results we'd like to see per page. And then we can sort it by either title or the division in ascending or descending order. So let's say, for instance, I want to view all biographies, but only biographies where the title starts with the letter B. If I apply that filtering, you'll see here we get a result of 95 biographies that start with the letter B. Alternatively, I could enter a specific name or specific text in our title text field. So let's say I want to look for only biographies with the name Blake in it. You'll see here we've got Charlotte Blake or Dr. Lottie Blake. And again, all of these are uh, uh, combinable, which means you can enter multiple filters here to limit your results. And you also see that we've got this view list of unfinished articles link here. Now what that takes you to is all the articles that are going to be appearing on the website in the future but have not either completed the authorship process or the editorial process. Alright, so let's go back to our browse page and uh, actually let's just use our search field real quick and we'll take a look at Lottie Blake's story. So we're going to take a look at a specific article page. Now before we do that I want to point out here in our search results we've got this click here to view a list of upcoming articles. That will show whenever there are um, unfinished or incomplete articles that match your search query or your filter query within the browse page. And this uh, lets you know that this article is on the way and it's still something that's in process. But again let's take a look at the actual article page itself. Now because I've come to this page from the search results, you see I've got a link that takes me back to the search results. And you also see that I've got my search term highlighted. So any terms that I'd entered in the search field would be highlighted in this text. So you see where they appear within the copy. And if they're distracting to you at all, you can simply click this remove highlighting link and they will be cleared away from the interface. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at each element here within the interface of the article page. The first thing you'll notice, and let's clear that highlighting again, the first thing you'll notice is a highlighted author name. If I click on that, you'll be given, or I'll, I will see here, the, the bio for the author of this particular article. If there are multiple authors, each one will be listed here in the bio field. Now here you'll see it, uh, a list of utilities. Pardon me, that's for rolling over the uh, plus sign there. And each one of these perform a different function. Let's go ahead and start with the bookmark icon. So this is the save option. And you'll see here as I hold my cursor over it, I get a little title of what this particular link does. So if I click on the save box, I'm taken to a login page because I'm not currently logged in. And the save option is to save this article for future reference. And in order to do that, of course, we have to save it to a specific account. So you have to set up an account on the page to use that feature. I'm not currently logged in, and to demonstrate, I'm going to go ahead and click this Create Login or Create Account tool, and I'll enter a name here, John Q Sample. And your email address will be your username. So we're going to enter jqs at gmail.com just as an example, and I'm going to enter a password. And I'm going to click Register. Oh, my passwords do not match help if I type that incorrectly. And here I have been uh, saved as a user. You see there aren't any articles here because I've just created the account. So all I need to do is close this and then if I come back here and click this again you will now see this article is saved under my account. And if I go to any additional articles, let's say for instance we went back to our medical missionary search results and I clicked on this article and clicked save you will see it appear here in the list in the order of I have saved them. And at any point if you want to remove one, just simply click remove from list. Alright, so let's return to our article page. We've covered our save icon. 
our next icon here is our citations icon. What that does is provides you APA, Chicago, and MLA citation formats for this particular article, which you can copy to your clipboard, or you can download as an MS Word file, or you can simply select and copy via your browser. All right, our next option here is PDF. And what PDF does is it generates a uh, PDF file of the article that I was, I was viewing. And you can save this uh, directly from your browser as a PDF file here via the download. Of course, depending on your browser, this interface may look slightly different, but you can save this as a PDF file to your local device and keep it for later use. Then we have our sharing options. We've got Facebook, we've got Twitter, we've got email, and then we've got uh, print, which does exactly what you think it does. It op opens your browser's print option, and you can see we've formatted the articles to be as printer-friendly as possible. And then there at the end, excuse me, here at the end you've got a plus icon which presents you with some additional social sharing options. All right, so within the article itself, there's a couple things to note. You'll see when an article contains additional photography, they're shown here as more photos under the primary photo. And here you can simply click on any of these. You'll be taken to a gallery view. And you can simply scroll through these to view these particular photos. And beneath the photo gallery, we have a related content list. And this will feature additional articles by the same author, or additional articles from the same division, or additional articles from the same uh, category. And you may see additional links here if there are specific articles that relate directly to this article. It's an easy way to cross-reference. And then the rest of the content, of course, is formatted as readably as possible. And at the bottom we have extensive resources and footnotes. And then one quick thing to note here, at the very, very bottom, you'll see we have a footer with some, uh, some legal terms, and then we have cookie settings. That's, it may be important to you, for instance, if the videos aren't working properly, which we'll be getting to shortly, in which case you can click on this cookie settings and change these preferences to make sure that you're allowing your videos to play. So that is the article interface. Now let's walk through the rest of the content that's on the website that may be of interest to you. So beyond browse articles, we've got a brief uh, message from the editor, from Dr. Trim. And then we've got an about page, which features a very informational video about this project, how it came to be, and from the people who, who initiated it and uh, organized it, and some interesting information about the background of the website. Then we have an author's list. Now the author's list is quite extensive. You can filter this list by a specific uh, letter. Let's say, for instance, I wanted to jump to the letter D, and then I could look within this and say, for instance, find Lester Devine. If I click on that, I will get the biography of this particular author, and thus I will also get a link to all the articles by this author, which will take you to the browse page that is pre-filtered to this particular author. In this case, you can see Lester has authored 79 articles at the ASDA. He's been a busy man. Next is our editors page. And again, wherever you see a name that is underlined, you can click on that to get biographical information about that individual. And here you'll see all the people who have been involved in the editorial process for the website. Next we have a videos page. And this is a, a growing page. Uh, we have a lot of videos here, both of historical ESDA stories. We've got interviews. Uh, we've got um, video lists from the Archives, Statistics, and Research Office, uh, This Week in Adventist History, which is also part of their own channel. And you'll see there's a couple different icons here. We've got this icon that looks a bit like a menu. This indicates that this link is a playlist of other videos. And then we've got a normal play icon, which means that, of course, would play a video right away. So let's say, for instance, we went to the interviews list. You can see we've got a number of interviews here with authors from... Uh, the ESDA project. And if you click on any of these particular videos, you'll be taken, of course, directly to the video of that particular interview. And you'll still see the rest of the interviews present here on that playlist. And then we can return to all videos here by the link at the top. So we'll be adding videos as we go, so make sure you check back on that regularly. Next we have a Get Involved page. Now this is a, a lot of extensive documentation for anyone interested in uh, contributing to the ASDA project. 
You have guidelines for writers, uh, guidelines for particular article types. So you're welcome to download these and review them. And then you can get in touch if you'd like to contribute. Here we've got uh, a direct email link. And we've got here again the click to view the list of unfinished articles, which would give you an idea of some of the people or some of the uh, entities we need articles submitted for. Next we have a contact page, which is a very simple form to just reach out to us if you have anything to say about the website or if you're interested in contributing and would like more information. And here we have a uh, FAQ about Adventists, very simple question and answer page. Uh, for those who maybe aren't as familiar with Adventism who are coming to the site for the first time. We've got a series of useful links. We'll take you to other really useful resources around the internet and links to our partners on this project. And then a very brief list of abbreviations uh, for divisions, etc., which will be added to as necessary. That covers the majority of the features of the ASDA website. We hope that helps you make the most of this amazing resource. Thanks for watching. If you haven't visited the ASDA website so far, we hope you will do so after this presentation. Go to encyclopedia.adventist.org and browse nearly 3,000 articles and 6,000 photographs on a variety of topics and written by authors from around the world. The ESDA is already proving to be an invaluable resource, not only for doing research on Adventist history, but also for preparing devotionals, sermons, mission stories, youth and children's programs, study materials for classes, prayer meetings and other events. The many pictures and videos help users visualize the people and places that the entries explore and bring a personal touch to the historical information. We believe you will find the ESDA to be academically and spiritually fulfilling and also an exceptional missional tool for reaching other people with the Adventist message. To find out about what's new in the ESDA and the ESDA historical nuggets, please follow the ESDA on Twitter. The handle is at Encyclopedia SDA and Facebook at gc.sda.archives. Finally, we invite Adventist authors from all walks of life who have expertise on a given subject to contribute to the ESDA. Hundreds of articles remain to be written and everyone has the potential opportunity to make a contribution, either as an author or peer reviewer, or by providing photographs, letters, and other historical materials. If you are interested in helping, you may contact the ESDA main office at encyclopedia at gc.adventist.org or through the Contact Us page on the website. The ESDA team are grateful for any support that would make this resource even better and wish you a happy reading. Thank you and God bless.